But I want to tell you a little personal note before I, I tell you a little bit more about Pastor Hans. First of all, it was in 1998 when God began to speak vision into Jody's heart and my heart. Uh, we started pastoring in 1997, and as always, we, we hit the ground running and, and just really uh, keeping things rolling. You know, the church had started in 1991. 1998, the Lord said that he wanted this church to be a New Testament type ministry. Well, even with Bible college and studying theology and all the things we did, we didn't really have any idea what that looks like in real time. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, when you have something in your heart, it just has to play out and you have to begin to allow God to show you how to do those things. And so it, he spoke to him and I said, God, who do we look to? What, you know, my first instinct was submit to somewhere. I said, God, who do I go to? Who do I learn from to, to learn what, it, what that is? I know what what the Bible says, and he says, I want you to study the book of Acts. That was the beginning of the New Testament church, governed by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen? God working through mankind. And so after that, the Lord told me, he said, I said, Lord, I said, I, I'm, I, I still need to have a, a pattern, something to look after. He said, I will send you the men that I want you to study under. And lo and behold, it wasn't long after that. I don't remember how long, but within a year's time, then we had the opportunity to meet Pastor Hans Kornstra in a meeting. And so a good friend of ours introduced us. And since then, we have been just thrilled to have his input and his teaching. And I say that because, you know, when the charismatic renewal began here in the United States, it had already started in Europe. And Pastor Hans was doing crusades all over Europe at that time. And, I mean, great crusades, and God was pouring out his blessing, and, and uh, he was involved with all of those things. And then it, it showed up here, and he didn't really want to come to the United States, but I'm so glad he did. And I know you will be, too, if you've ever heard him speak, or today, if this is your first introduction to that man, you'll be blessed. But he was under the first trip to the States, and I'll cut it short because I don't want to take up all of his time. But his first trip to the States, it was in New York City, and, uh, and they were bringing them around and preaching different places. And... Finally, one day, they brought him into this meeting, the pastor that invited him here, tremendous story in and of itself, brought him into a meeting and said, we're going into this meeting. There's going to be about 3,000 people there. And, uh, and he said, and you're speaking tonight. Now, this was in the morning service. And uh, some of you may recognize the name of the person that was doing the morning service, and that was Catherine Kuhlman. So his first introduction here in the States was when, so, when God had teamed him up with those who were bringing it from across the ocean over to here. And so he has seen so many great things in the movement of God. And uh, he's kind of a connection to, to help us who have never seen that kind of revival to get an understanding of what God has done. And so the word that he preaches is always going to be encouraging, uplifting, and directional. Amen? Everybody say, God is good. Amen. Will you please welcome Pastor Hans Kornstra as he comes to minister in the Rock Church this morning. It is good to be with you. And um, last time, last tour I made through the States, I thought it would be the last one I would do. And I shared that with some people. <coughs> <coughs> and then uh, I was very determined. Um, and then a pastor called me from the States <clears throat> and said, what are you doing? He says, you, you cannot stay away. You just have to come. He said, uh, it's not over yet, friend. You come. And that just did it. So I'm back and I thought, maybe this is the last time. <laughs> but during this trip, I can truly say I was so happy that I don't dare to say goodbye for good, you know. No, I don't. So I may be back. But at the same time, that thought remained with me for this particular trip. And I thought, just imagine that we would not meet again. 
Uh, could be. You know, I'm over 26. I'm, I'm even over 60. I'm even over s 70. It's get harder all the time. I'm over s 75. Well, anyway, I won't go on. You know, it's, it's no good. Um, I'm 79. So, here we go. Uh, and there's still hope. You know, it's still up. But thinking about the last time, what would I like to leave with you if this is the last time? Could be, could be, you know. Could get a heart attack. I'm not planning to, but, you know, you never know. Could be, but, but let me say, what would I say to you? What would I like to leave behind? That's the introduction to what I'm going to read. And I'm going to read a portion from John chapter 4. I, I uh, <coughs> read from John 4 and I start to read at verse 6. It's a, a bit prolonged piece of scripture, but... I do that so that you see the whole setting of what we're dealing with this morning. John 4, verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do, do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband, in that you spoke the truth. Uh, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you do say it's in Jerusalem the place to worship him. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who's called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, who do you seek? Or 
Why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the man, Come and see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said one to another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. This portion I wanted to read. We read about a Samaritan woman who comes to draw water. It seems a very normal scene, but it isn't. The first thing that happened was Jesus is tired, and he, it is scorching hot, and he's sitting under a tree next to a well and moves his disciples out of the way. Sometimes you need that, you know, uh, go buy food in Syker, you know, and that's, that's where they went. So they went away. He was on his own. He's just resting. And here comes this woman. What's so peculiar about this? Well, do you know what time it is? It's midday. It says the sixth hour. They start to count from six, you know, hour six o'clock. Now it's scorching hot. Now, there's one thing you shouldn't do is come and get water because it's too hot. Don't do that. That's hard work. So when people draw water, they come in the morning or they come in the evening, but they don't come midday. Now, why did she come midday? I'll tell you. She wanted to make sure she was on her own. She was a marked woman. And everybody had a story about her. And when they looked at her, if eyes could have killed, she would have been dead long ago. That's the position. So she comes when she's sure there's nobody there. Now she comes and by chance, Jesus is there, sitting there. And Jesus opens the conversation, which is rather remarkable, but Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. I have to explain that you don't understand that, do you? Sometimes people don't want to talk with others. You know, in those days that happened. Just in case, you know. Uh, uh. Well, that's Jews and Samaritans. So here is the first obstacle. She's a Samaritan. She's a woman. That's another obstacle. Yet Jesus crosses over and says, uh, can you give me a drink? And she's amazed that Jesus talks to her. Says, you a man, being a Jew, talking to a Samaritan woman. And Jesus keeps talking. He says, you know, <laughs> if you knew to whom you're talking, you would have asked him to give you something to drink. And the woman says, you got no bucket? How do you do that? And Jesus said, you can drink of this water, but you'll be thirsty again. That, 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 is, that is common sense. That's what we understand. And Jesus makes there a picture of what the world can do. The world can quench your thirst. It can. It can. But if you stop drinking, you get thirsty again. It never quenches your thirst. You know, uh, when I was young, which is just a few years ago, um, when I was young, I, I, did, I, I loved ballroom dancing. You know? Not the hitchhiking. No, 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 no. You know, ballroom dancing. You know, I love that. So, um, and I did that. 
And I was, uh, when I was on the floor, on the dance floor, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was marvelous. There was only one hang up. Sometimes they stopped to have a drink. And I didn't want to stop. I just wanted to keep going and going and going. Ladies enough. Anyway, you know, I just kept going. Just kept going. All the time. Never stopped. Never took a stop. Never never rested. No, I was drinking of the water. Uh, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Uh, if anybody would have stopped me and said, Hans, are you happy? I said, don't disturb me. I am absolutely perfectly happy. You know? Uh, and I danced. I said, but I dreaded the moment when the last record would be played or the band would close and say, now this is the last one. I thought, oh no, oh no. You know? And, and the last one, and, and the music faded and everybody went home. And I went outside, it was dark. And you know, I felt so lonely. And I felt so tired. You know, I'd been working hard. And my thirst was not quenched, it was there again. There was a solution go next night again. You know, that's about all. You know, lots of people do that on all kinds of levels. Some people like to drink in a bar. It tastes a lot better in the bar. Okay? Okay? But there's no one coming out and saying, I never have to go here anymore. I got it now. No. They, they, if they drink a lot, they, they get the next morning uh, uh, free of charge, hangover. <laughs> you know? Hangover. And, 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 and they feel terrible. So the only way out is, tonight I'll be back. And there are many people on different levels with different things living like that. Jesus said, you can drink of that water, but you'll be thirsty again. Now, Jesus says, I could give you water and it will become inside of you. Whoa, living water springing up into everlasting life. The woman just thinks, you know, she's a natural thinker. She says, uh, that would be nice. I don't have to come here anymore in the heat of the day. So she said, uh, sir, could I have some of that? And she's out of the blue, you know, out of the blue, says, call your husband. That was a bit of a, you know, touchy subject. <laughs> a bit of a touchy. So she says, I have no husband. Now, if we had been Jesus and had known what he knew then, we would have told her and said, you big liar. I know something about you. You know? But did you know Christianity is well known for its finger? It's not a good reputation, I tell you. It's not. Jesus never, never pointed his finger to her. He said, when she says, I have no husband, he didn't say, you big liar, I'm going to tell you. No. He said, you spoke the truth. Because you've had five husbands and you're on number six and that's not yours. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. But he says it in such a way. He doesn't come with the hammer. He comes with his hand. He doesn't say, you're a bad sinner. He just sees a woman who is so thirsty for life and she cannot find it. And, and he, he doesn't push her away. He puts his arms around her and says, uh, if you knew, if you knew. Oh, she says, sir, are you a prophet? 
You're like a prophet. You tell me the truth. Uh, uh, Are you greater than Abram who gave us the well and drank of it? He himself, his sons, and his flocks? And Jesus said, looked at her, and then she says first, we know that the Messiah will come. You know, she's, she's a woman who's not anti-religious. No, 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 no. She's got a problem. Okay, yes. As soon as you got religion, you got problems. Did you know? Uh, um, you, you know, she, she says, uh, uh, I, I, I realize that you, you're a prophet. Now, we have some religious discussions. Uh, the, the, the Jews say you must be in Jerusalem. And we say it's here on the mountain. Isn't it strange that the world hasn't changed very much? They're still talking like that. There, you should be there, you know. Let me say this, my friend. The answer of Jesus is astounding. He says, the time comes. And a bit later he says, it's now that you can pray to God anywhere. You don't need the mountain. You don't need Jerusalem. You just can talk anywhere. You can talk even inside a church building. You know, well, they didn't have one. <laughs> but because you, you could pray while you walk on the street. You, you, can, you can talk to God while you're behind the steering wheel, especially when you can speak in tongues. It's so nice. Have you tried it? Uh-huh, you can be in big traffic and still speak in tongues, you know. That's why we can pray with our spirit, the Bible says. It's so great, you know, so great. Now, uh, d- keep doing it. Uh, the Bible says you edify yourself. That's what we need. If you want to be something for God, if you want to mean something to somebody else, uh, speak in tongues. Oh, but you say, oh, it's a bit of a giver, you know. I don't understand speaking in tongues, did you know? I've never understood it. Never. But it's great. Amen. You edify yourself. Something happens inside. Now, Jesus talks uh, uh, to this woman, and this woman said, uh, where do we go now, here or there? Jesus. Oh, she says, we know that, that the Messiah will come, the, the Christ, the anointed one. And he, he will explain everything to us. Now listen to what Jesus does. This is an amazing statement. He never said that to anyone. He says, I'm, I'm that one. Did you know he never said that? He never said that to his disciples. He never said it to the world. He never, never said. He says it to a woman, to an outcast, to a Samaritan. He says, I am the one. Isn't that amazing? The only thing I I realize is later when he stands over against Pilate. When Pilate says, are you the Christ? Are you the one? He says, you said it. But he reveals himself to an outcast who's no good. He gives himself away to a woman of bad reputation. That's my Jesus. That's my Jesus. Hallelujah. That's my Jesus. He comes to those that need him. He comes to those that are filthy and he's not afraid to take their filth. He is, he is like that. That is my Savior. You know, um, the, the, she, she, the Lord said to her, call your husband. Some people think the Bible is very old-fashioned. She had had five husbands. That's modern. That's very up-to-date, isn't it? My goodness, she outbeat some Hollywood stars even, you know. She'd had five and she was busy with number six. Well, let me tell you, my friend, human nature is the same. Uh, We have a lot of things around us that those people didn't have, 
But human nature is the same. And our longings and our needs are just the same. And Jesus walks to her, asks her to drink, and tells her, I'm the one. I'm the one. And, and you know, the woman is so excited. She's so excited. Do you know, talking about quenching your thirst, she forgets her water pot and runs off without taking water out of the well. Whoa! Something happened to her. Well, you know, and she goes into the town. Now, the town knew her. You know, watch that woman. But now she comes into the town that disqualifies her, and she does something there. She testifies, says, I have found him. I have found him. Did you know you can be an absolute waste, and Jesus can turn you around and make you somebody? And you know, they never wanted to listen to this woman, but that day something shines through her face. And, and, and you know, everybody says, where is he? She says, follow me. She knows how to lead people to Christ. Whoa, she hasn't been to Bible college. You know, she just did it. Hallelujah. I tell you, my friend, her heart was full. It was burning inside. And she leads the whole town to Jesus. The Bible says, now we don't believe because of what you said. Now we've seen him ourselves. You know, in the meantime, the disciples have come back hot, tired, food, you know. Well, they say, Lord, here it is. He says, put it aside. They say, you first sent us out to get it, and now you don't want it. We're hot. It's scorching hot, and we worked ourselves all the way through the town to find what you want. And now it's here. He said, I'm not hungry. All right. Oh, Jesus said, I'm eating of something else. I'm drinking something else. Oh, this is what I came for. See that woman? She come with the whole crowd. Do you know, by the way, friends, the disciples, the future apostles, they went into that town, and the only thing they got out of it was food. That woman goes in, sinner, wrong, six times wrong, and she goes in. And she carries the whole city to Jesus Christ. I tell you, my friend, what we need is people who will be turned around by the power of God. They can turn the town upside down. I tell you, we do not need a new definition of the gospel. We need a new demonstration of the gospel. Let me say in concluding this, my friend. I want you to realize that you may be sitting here with trouble in your heart. You may be hindered by something. Oh, yes. You love Jesus, but you feel guilty. You want to follow him, but you feel disqualified. You carry a load with you. It's like, like a chain and a big piece of rock. And that's how you go on. Oh, I still keep going to church. And it's good you do, my friend. But what about it? You say, but I, I'm, 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 I'm scared. Have another look at Jesus. He doesn't come with a hammer. He come with his hand. 
He doesn't come with condemnation. He comes with forgiveness. He doesn't come to kick you around. He wants to keep you close to himself. When you are burdened, my friend, when things have gone wrong in your life and you know it and you hope nobody else knows it and you hope nobody sees it but you, you got it inside, friend. Stop today. Turn around. Just come to Jesus. It's safe with him. He doesn't come. The Bible says he, Jesus came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. My friend, he, do you know why I'm still around? It's because of him. Oh, but you're a minister. Yeah, ministers can fail. Why am I still around? Because he never gives up. He loves me. He loves me. He doesn't love love my mistakes and faults and sin. No, he doesn't. But he loves me. And he, he just wants you to come, my friend. Now, if you're here this morning and there's something in your heart hindering you, perhaps already for years, I don't know, or it may be for weeks or months, it doesn't matter, but you say, I hope nobody finds out. Let me tell you, my friend, come to Jesus. Don't don't let your life be put on halt. You know, go to Jesus and surrender to him. He will not condemn you. He will forgive you. He'll say, at last you come. So glad you come. But Lord, oh, you don't have to say anything. I know. And I love you. That will change you your heart, that will change your attitude, that will cut the chains that bound you. I heard a song yeah, about leaving your chains behind and so on. You know, let's have some change here, you know. It's not the offering, it's the other change, you know. Yeah. Let me say this, friend. You may have been thirsty, and you may have been drinking from the wrong source. And say, I did it, and it was nice while I did it, and I got a complete hangover. I feel so terrible. My friend, if you're here, I would not be surprised if you come forward. I will just be rejoicing. If you want me to pray that God will take away what needs to be taken away today in your life, if you want me to pray for that, for you, that God will take it away, would you raise your hand? Would you raise your hand? And I promise I will pray that God will change your life and take away that what hinders you. Maybe nobody knows about. That's okay. That's okay. As long as Jesus knows about it. He knows. Let him do it. If there's anyone, just raise your hand. And I promise, I will pray that God will change the course of your life. He'll put you in gear again. And you'll be going, going, going. Is there anyone? Just tell me now. Show me your hand. Don't be ashamed. Forget the people. I see your hand. It's okay. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Show me your hand. I see your hand. You can put it down, lady. Thank you. Is there anybody else? I see your hand, and I see your hand. I see your hand, sir. Thank you. I see your hand, lady. I see your hand, sir. Thank you. If there's anyone else, do it now. I see your hand, sir. It's, it's not that I'm begging for response. I just want you to clear it out today. Just hand in all the garbage. Just give it to him. 
and say, Lord, this is the moment. I turn my back on the garbage and I walk with you. He can give you what is solution in your soul. If there's anyone else, it's my final appeal. If there's anyone else, show me your hand now. Is there anybody else? All right. I'm going to ask the people that raised the hand, would you stand to your feet? I'm going to pray for you right now. Just get up from your seat. All right. Perhaps I'd better do it this way. Would you come to me and stand here? It's okay. Just stand here. Come and stand with me. Just come and stand.